hello everyone and welcome to another video now on my right side there is a 3.6 liter v6 engine and on my left side there is a 2 liter inline four cylinder engine now this engine produces 250 this is just an example this engine produces 250 bhp while this engine also produces 250 bhp how is that possible well a few years back the auto industry started going towards the downsize engine trend where where they would just reduce the 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 bigger engines into a smaller engine but there was something with a bit of a catch so let's just put this engine aside for now for a while and then focus on this one so this one is a downsized engine now in this essentially the component that played the crucial factor was the turbocharger so the turbocharger made all this possible of producing the same amount of uh, power from the 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 3.6 liter engine which used to produce before into a same block which is a two points uh, a two liter engine and that's how it happened so in today's video we are going to be discussing about the downsize engine compared to the naturally aspirated engine and we're going to be comparing it and how essentially this works and is it really the way forward uh, in the future the reason why the manufacturers started jumping onto the downsize engine was because a there were regulations and laws and because of which they were forced to start putting massive amounts of their R&D budgets into developing these uh, uh, downsize engines. There were a, a few reasons why they just stopped uh, manufacturing those engines and then just quietly moved on to this bigger engine again in some vehicles. But then apart from that, they switched to the hybrid vehicles. So to understand the downsize engine, there's a turbocharger and then in a, in a normal engine, which is a 3.6 liter, again, our example engine, the 3.6 liter engine has air and fuel ratio being mixed and it is usually the lean and then when you accelerate, it goes usually into a rich uh, mixture. But in the downsize engine, what happens is the when you're normally cruising, is it just mixes the air fuel ratio in a, in a normal proportion as this engine but when you want to accelerate or when you want more power the turbocharger kicks in and the exhaust gases use them so the way turbocharger works is the exhaust gases would uh, drive the turbine and then from that uh, inlet port there will be an exit port which is your uh, the exhaust pipes from where the gases would escape but in that there is a turbine which uh, spins uh, which rotates and then that produces a suction at the other end and that is being used to uh, that is basically connected to the uh, in uh, intake of the engine and that is how there is a forced induction of air using the turbocharger now so that uh, the the basic principle of the turbocharging is clear so the turbocharging helps in pushing more air into the cylinder and as a result of that you always have a rich mixture what happens is these engine blocks are because they are going through a high pressure cycle they are forced to have thicker walls and a strong build and as a result of that they are a little on the the higher weight compared to the standard 3.6 liter or any naturally aspirated engine but in order to squeeze out that much amount of power from them which is why a, a good build quality is needed for this engine and also apart from that there are a lot of added costs to the the downsize engine now the major cause is the turbocharger because the turbocharger you still don't know there are cars that are on road but then the maintenance on them is pretty heavy because if a turbocharger fails that it's an expensive fix to do there are a lot of uh, reports which say that these engines are a little on the expensive side to manage also compared to the the NA engines the NA means the naturally aspirated engine so again continuing with this trend so the manufacturers realized that this just did not make sense because a you have to invest a lot of R&D costs into these uh, engines the main point is to improve the thermal efficiency of a uh, naturally aspirated engine and that was the whole point of it to in order to reduce the emissions and improve the fuel efficiency 
so that was just simple as that and instead focused the all the r d budget into improving just the the already existing engine when you are cruising say about at 120 kilometers per hour this engine would be idling at a much lower speed uh, rpm sorry than this engine which will have to really force its way to produce that much of power to make sure that you are maintaining that much amount of speed or otherwise you will have to have more gearing into the gearbox uh, compared to the any engine so these are the factors that really differentiated between the these two engines and then which is why quietly they just started to just drop these ideas and then just so uh, an example of the uh, of uh, the downsize engines are Audi decided to make an electric turbocharger fit to their uh, normal uh, downsize engine so that there was no lag from the system now when you attach a turbocharger to uh, to an engine there is a slight bit of power lag initially in the cycle because the turbo uh, blades need to spool up in order to start the suction so as a result of that in order to build that much of pressure it takes a little while and so there is a turbo lag continuing with the audi uh, experiment so they decided to fit an electric charger to uh, sorry an electric mode turbocharger to the engine block so as a result they would just force the air initially and then that would give you a very sort of stable curve of torque uh, instead of having a sudden surge after say 2000 rpm which is usually when the turbochargers start kicking in another example was having a variable uh, uh, geometry turbocharger so that also so to an extent tried to solve the issue but this is the most widely used formula currently in the uh, between the manufacturers and the another example from the bmw was injecting water particles into the cylinder now this was just a wild sort of uh, experiment that bmw was trying to do so the idea was that when they infuse uh, water particles into the cylinder head while the combustion is going on they try to uh, cool down the air so that there was more amount of more volume of air inside the cylinder instead of fitting the turbocharger to the the engine block because obviously they realized that this would just become way too expensive and this was just an easy fix of trying to just put uh, water particles into the cylinder but it was just again an experiment and, and it never made into any passenger or any vehicle if i know of but anyways that was the idea behind these two engines and then slowly it was dropped and then again these engines returned back if you see the uh, a Dodge uses the same sort of engine, Jeep uses the same engine, even a major manufacturers use. Turbocharging is something which is not really recommended. In a day-to-day -day use, it's not really a useful thing because the engine block, uh, the downsize engine block goes through a lot of stress cycle also. So you don't really know the age of it, it's probably around 10 years, it may be a little less than that, but then it's for sure less than the the any engines the most ideal solutions to a downsize engine compared to the any engine are the hybrid cars the hybrid cars are perfect right now because let's say you have a one liter ecoboost engine and then that is uh, mated to electric motors and a battery pack and that would also give you the same amount of power in fact more than that and also the electric motors would give you more uh, more torque initially so even that solves the 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 problem of the turbo lag initially from the system so that that is also solved and again the the whole package also squeezes down to a very small uh, sort of volume where the one liter engine is pretty small you can just fit that and also have the motors and the battery pack under the car and then you are good to go and the fuel economy again between these two was pretty similar because if you accelerate you were stressing the downsize engine and again it just did not really save any amount of fuel because the whole point of downsizing was that you want to have the same amount of power without consuming more petrol and having a higher efficiency but then that wasn't possible with the downsize engine so currently the hybrid engines are way ahead in terms of economy compared to the naturally aspirated engine and i think hybrid engines are the way forward or the whole hybrid setup is the way forward to look into the next sort of viable solution to the the fuel economy anyways that is pretty much it for this video give it a thumbs up if you liked it and if you want to subscribe to my channel then click here and if you want to watch more videos then click here until we meet next time bye bye and stay safe